Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the RLA Bird Class Destroyers from the United States Navy. Please remember to like and subscribe. Alright, let's get right into it. Fact 1. Longest Production Run The RLA Bird Class Destroyers is currently the longest production and an active production destroyer in the United States military. It is quite interesting because this warship actually first started building way back in 1980s. But actually there was a restart of its production. There was an intention from the United States Navy to replace this entire class with the Zomwa class destroyers. However, because of immediate need for long-term and short-term missile threats, they actually restarted the production of the Arleigh Bird class. That's right, in 2009, the United States Navy decided that they needed to restart active production of the Arleigh Bird class destroyers, starting with DDG-113-115, which are the restart Flight 2A ships. Alright, Fact 2, All Steel Construction. It's very interesting that the United States typically do not disclose the kind of materials used to construct its aircrafts or ships and so forth. But the RLA Bird class, the United States Navy was quite clear that this ship is encompassing an all steel construction. As a result, plenty of these ships are named with references to steel. And so it is quite interesting that despite advancements in composites and fiberglass and all these other synthetic materials, they chose something tried and true. And so the Arleigh Bird class destroyers all have an entirely steel hull and its surface components are all made of steel. Now I'm not sure what decided the components or the material, however it's obviously been working well because again as I mentioned in the previous section, this is the longest active production destroyer in the United States Navy. With an all steel construction, and again steel being a very very old material, I'm not so sure how these ships can handle mitigating between radar signature reflection and also sea mine magnetic attachments. But perhaps they have other secrets that we don't know about. Alright, Fact 3. Mark 41 Vertical Launch System These destroyers have a primary mission of firing tons and tons of missiles, cruise missiles, rockets, and so forth, toward the enemy target. And so all of them contain the same exact Mark 41 Vertical Launch System. This vertical launch system is a critical component of the Aegis Combat System, mainly the firing part of it. It is capable of firing so many different kinds of missiles, the RIM-66 standard, RIM-67, Tomahawk cruise missiles, RIM-161, 174 missiles, RIM-7 Sea Sparrow anti-air missiles, and the Joint Strike missile. The launch system has 8 individual cells capable of launching many missiles in a rapid pace toward the enemy target. What's incredibly interesting is that the Arleigh Bird class is that actually the first ones to use it. In fact, the USS Bunker Hill of the Ticonderoga destroyer was the first operational launcher platform. The Arleigh Bird class destroyers simply took what's working and incorporated it on their ships as well. Alright, Fact 4, 4 Variants As I mentioned in previous sections, the production of the Arleigh Bird class destroyers was restarted in 2009. Up to that point, there was actually three different types of variants. The Flight 1 was the original one, which encompassed DDG-51-71. to And then there was another advancement and upgrades to Flight 2, which encompasses DDG-72-78. to And then, unexpectedly, when the production was resumed in 2009, DDG-79-124 and 127 are the Flight 2A variants, which again has additional technologies, but also no harpoon launchers. 
There is the final flight of the Flight 3 DDG 125 to 126 and 128 onwards. They have helicopter hangars and new exhaust stack designs. As you can see, they continuously to upgrade and maintain or even take out features that are not useful. And as a result, they don't need to start from scratch. They've simply continued to refine and improve on an existing platform to save time and cost and speed up time to development and time to deployment. And so now there's four variants. Alright, let's get into the next and final fact. Ancestors to other nations' destroyers. Because the Arleigh Lake Bird class destroyers are so useful, versatile, and successful, other nations have adopted it, mainly the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force and the Republic of Korea Navy. The Japanese created the Atego class, Congo class, and the Maya class destroyers, all based on the Arleigh Bird class destroyer platform. For the Republic of Korea Navy, they created the Sojun the Great class destroyers, which again is entirely based on the Arleigh Bird class, using the same AGS combat systems and so forth. So as you can see, the Arleigh Bird class is a very successful destroyer platform. Not only did other nations want to copy it and derive from it, the United States itself continues to produce them, despite the designs or the overall shape from the 1980s. And when you look at the Zomwa class, you can see it looks like a way more advanced and futuristic ship, whereas the Arleigh Bird class looks like a very traditional warship, if you will. Regardless of looks, this class of destroyers are clearly super useful and successful, and currently the backbone of the United States Navy. Alright, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.